today on Apocalypse Watch. Um, because of uh, Israel's sick genocidal attack on an aid convoy, um, other charities are now pulling out and refusing to um, bring aid to Gaza, not because they want to, but because um, especially given that the charity hit had a very good relationship with both the United States and the IDF, it kind of had a chilling effect. Like, well, if they'll kill them, who will they not kill? This Jesus is not Christ. UNRWA, who they've had a grudge against for decades. This is an organization in very good standing with the State Department and with the Israeli government. So if they're not safe, nobody is. Um, this is from The Guardian. The humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza seems likely to worsen after charities announced they are suspending operations in the territory in the aftermath of an Israeli drone attack, which repeatedly targeted a clearly identified convoy of international aid workers killing seven. The strikes on a team from World Central Kitchen led the charity, along with other aid organizations such as Enera, which helps refugees around the Middle East, and the U.S.-based Project HOPE, which focuses on health care, to announce on Tuesday that it would pause operations in Gaza to protect its staff. Calling the decision an unprecedented step, Anera said the killings, alongside the loss of numerous other aid workers and their families, has led our team to conclude that delivering aid safely is no longer feasible. While we understand the severe consequences this suspension will have on the Palestinian population, the escalating risks associated with aid delivery leave us with no choice but to halt operations until our staff regain confidence that they can do their work without undue risk, a statement said. Famine is projected and imminent in the northern half of Gaza, a UN-backed report said last month. And according to Oxfam, since December, the number of people in the Palestinian territory facing catastrophic levels of hunger has nearly doubled. At least 27 children have died of malnutrition, according to the health ministry in the territory, which is controlled by the Palestinian militant group Hamas. Aid ships organized by WCK arrived in Gaza on Monday, carrying 400 tons of food and supplies, enough for 1 million meals, in a shipment funded by the United Arab Emirates after a successful pilot run last month. Now, I'm just going to say, 1 million meals, from what I understand, there's about 2.2 million people there. So even that is one meal for less than half of the people. They'd kill in northern you. Gaza right yeah. now. Well, I guess and that would be if yeah. they got it all in. However, workers had only offloaded 100 tons before the drone attack led the charity to order the vessels carrying the remaining aid to return to Cyprus. Um, so this is uh, the last video that was filmed by two of the people. Hey, this killed. is Zomi and Shep and Olivier. We're at the Dira Balaf kitchen um, and we've got the mise en place. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about it, Chef Ali. This is the mise en place to make the, to cook the rice. So we have uh, all the spices for to boil the water, to be ready for uh, the, the boiling water inside the rice. This is the steam fry with oil, the steam fry onions. Uh, we have the spices. And after we uh, fry the rice, we add the water. The water is aromatized with this, this mix of spices. There is the black lemon, there is some chili, there is a seven mix of spices, bay leaves, salt, uh, pepper, and tomato paste. Indeed, so uh, this is the, the beautiful fragrant aromatic rice that will be served today from Girovala Kitchen. Thank you. Jesus both both dead, along with five others. And it was three, because McCray and his thing is like they hit three times, so it wasn't Oh, like yeah. No, we're going to get to that, uh, because now more information is coming out. Uh, on Tuesday, the Israeli Daily Haaretz published harrowing details of the strike, citing defense sources. According to the report, 
An Israeli drone fired three missiles, one after the other, at the convoy of three armored cars, all of which were clearly marked on the roof and sides with the WCK's logo because of a suspicion that an armed militant was traveling with them. Oh, well, then they had to do it morally. They were they had to listen. Sure I, keep, I, keep ma- I keep making this comparison. It's like the South Park episode about you had to feel threatened to hunt. Yeah. And so they would just say, oh, he was coming right at us. That That's what they do. Oh, that was Hamas. It was Hamas. It was Hamas. This is about genocide. So you don't this think is it about to make wiping. sure no food can this, come there ever that's again? That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. They want they wanted exactly what happened here for all of these charities to stop coming in order to yeah. wipe them out. Now I know USS Liberty was exactly what the guys on the boat said it was. Yes, to dra- yeah. Exactly. Yep. Despite the fact that the suspect did not leave the warehouse with the rest of the group. The cars were hit as they traveled back along a route pre-approved and coordinated with the Israel Defense Forces. A Hermes 450 drone struck one car, causing some of the passengers to abandon it and switch to the other two vehicles. According to Haaretz, the team notified the IDF they had been attacked, but another missile then hit the second car. The Israeli military expressed sincere sorrow over the deaths, adding that an investigation was underway. Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, this is the one who called Palestinians animals, by the way. Not Amalek? Uh, No, that was Netanyahu. That was Netanyahu. That was Netanyahu. Said on Tuesday evening that Israel would open a joint situation room with international groups to enable better coordination of aid distribution. We are going to, it's going to take time, maybe next year we will Dude, this. Open is this. like if you bought a goddamn VCR on 42nd Street from these people years ago, how you'd get dicked around, except it's people being murdered. It's More, that same Sony guts. It's got Sony it's, guts. Well, well, this is what they've been doing for 75 years. They've just been playing a very long game of gradually stealing more and more land, wiping out more and more people, driving them further and further back until uh, they're just that. That's what's happening here. They have decided this is this is the Zionist mentality. Their narrative, the way they see the world yeah. is they came to their indigenous land, which even though most of them are secular, was given to them by God, yeah, right. right? It's promised in the Bible. It's yeah. their land. Bill Maher agrees. Doesn't and there are God. these, of he course agrees. he does. Of course he does that fucking piece of shit. <laughs> and, and here you have these savage, primitive, barbaric people. Yeah. Who they Amalekites. have repeatedly tried to make peace with and made generous yeah. offers to. What choice and, they have? And because they're so barbaric and primitive and they're led by... Just foul people who yeah. mislead them. That and that's the liberal view. That's that what my ex would that me. it's their that's leaders are terrible. That. They have bad leaders. And so yeah. they have bad leaders, exactly. And it's not, not that like that's BB. the liberal view. That's the Israelis who aren't comfortable just calling them Amalek. Um, so they keep killing our people and forcing us to retaliate. Gold of my ear had these sheer unmitigated balls yeah. to say. One day we may be able to forgive them for killing our children, but they we we will never be forgive them for making us kill their children. You want to talk that about a some... sick, sick abuser's wow. psychology? She actually said that, and this woman was celebrated as a hero that, around wow. the, around the world. That in is her, some real in her lifetime. She literally said that. So we have tried and tried, but now what they have done on October seventh. It's the final straw. They won't say this, but this is what's going on here. It's the final straw. We've taken all we can. We're the world's most moral army. We've done everything we can to help these people. Mm -hmm. And all they do is keep attacking us. And now this is the worst thing to ever happen since the Holocaust to any people anywhere on earth. And this is it. We have to wipe them out and the world (laughs) can judge us later. That is exactly what's happening. I hope whatever the irony is whatever lost bullshit on of what they wow. say about it. That what did Marcus Aurelius say? How do you know a thing by what it does? Yeah. Forget about what they're saying. Look at what they're doing. They are trying to wipe them out as a people from the region and create conditions that are so horrific 
that they they have no choice but to go live as refugees in other countries. Bunch of people know and then here. and then they're going to build some you know Miami Beach hotels. A bunch right of my friends know that in Gaza, by the way, and they're up for it. They know it. They won't say it out loud. But when we had Finkelstein on, first time I ever had explained to me very simply where I understood it. First time. Right. And when I go, hey, Gaza's a concentration camp? Expecting to hear, no, it's not. Yeah, what are they supposed to do? But, I thought not have concentration camps myself. Well, you're naive. Yeah. Uh, so let's get, let's finish this up. More than 200 aid workers have been killed in Gaza since the war between Israel and Hamas began after the militant group's attack on Israeli communities on 7 October. Jamie McGoldrick, the UN's top official for the coordination of humanitarian aid in Gaza, said on Tuesday, the attack on WCK was not an isolated incident, he added, pointing out that the number of humanitarians killed in the last six months in Gaza was nearly three times as high as the death toll recorded in any other single conflict in a year. You understand any other World War One, World War Two, Vietnam. Iraq, any other. <laughs> Monday's killings caused an international outcry, including rebukes from some of Israel's closest international allies, such as the U.S. Yeah, that and a nickel won't get you out of a genocide. Uh, the White House said it was outraged by the attack, although John Kirby, the national security spokesperson, said there was no evidence Israel deliberately targeted the aid workers. So this is Will Manneker. They fired three missiles at three separate cars with the WCK logo on them. So let's uh, see what this oh, winner had to say about sack. it. Right. Well, on the point of conditions, the president on February 8th issued a memo, and it said, uh, and you already know this, but just for context, it said that it was the policy of this administration to prevent arms transfers that risk facilitating or otherwise contributing to violations of human rights or international humanitarian law. Is firing a missile at people delivering food and killing them not a violation of international humanitarian law? Well, the Israelis have already admitted that uh, this was a mistake that they made. They're doing an investigation. They'll get to the bottom of this. Let's not get ahead of that. Um, your, your question presumes at this very early hour that it was a deliberate strike, that they knew exactly what they were hitting, that they were hitting aid workers and did it on purpose. And there's no evidence of that. I would also remind you, sir, that no evidence we that. continue to look at incidents None? as they occur. The State Department has a process in place. And to date, as you and I are speaking, they have not found any incidents where the Israelis have violated international <laughs> humanitarian law. Unless you think we don't take it seriously, I can assure you that we do. We yeah. look at this in real time. Oh, real time. They have violated international humanitarian law ever in the past five to six months. I'm telling you, the State Department has looked at incidents in the past and has yet to determine that any of those incidents violate international humanitarian law. Go ahead, Nadia. Wow. Thank you, wow. These wow. guys make tobacco lobbyists look like Mother Teresa Keaton. I mean, what do you say to that? I mean, no evidence that they did it on purpose. How about the fact that they fired on three different cars, right. all of which were after clearly being told they had been hit with the World Central Kitchen logos after they had already called in that they had been hit? That's not evidence they did it on purpose. I would say that's fucking damn near proof they did it on purpose. That's beyond evidence in my book. But at the very least, that's obviously evidence. And I love that. Well, what are you saying? We don't take seriously international law. Are you suggesting we don't take that seriously? <laughs> yes, that is what we're suggesting. All the yes. voters of Michigan are saying it's, that, sir. It's quite obvious that, uh, yeah, you don't take that seriously. No, yeah, well, what are these undecideds? <laughs> Where are they coming from? They're, they're, well, well, they're, like ma they're MAGA. something weird in like, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Oh, well, are you suggesting I have a head in my refrigerator? Is that, <laughs> is that what you're? Is that what you're implying? Yeah. I mean, I, it, it, even this incident aside, the videos that have come out of Gaza over the last six months. How can you say there's no evidence? I, we can find the evidence. You can't with the resources of the State Department. We've played the evidence on the air. Yeah, you have mass graves. You have people discovered buried with their hands tied behind their back. We've seen footage. We just saw footage. Jimmy just shared footage of an old man with his hands up being summarily executed by the IDF. Plenty of evidence if you want to look at it. But you said it before. Obviously, they go, this don't. is a bunch of people I know 
who know that because I remember hearing about this. All, they've been getting away with this for quite some time. Just they have. Bla- blown they away have. people that they're not allowed to kill. And I didn't care so much until why now? Why is now so different? Because they don't have the control to like cover it up like they used to. Right. And uh, they, I guess that has well, It's, whatever, it's yeah. also the scale of it. The scale of it is just too yeah. Much. They never pulled it's just this too big much. A murder. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't even know about the way snipers took people out when they did a peaceful march for the right of return. And this is something that. I think most people didn't really know about, a lot, about of, it. a lot of people in the political space knew about it, but it was not known I went, like ah. what's happening now. Is I went known. Ah, like that. not, that's what I did because it's, it, it was when I started to do research um, that I uncovered. Wow, man. I mean, it's it's just disgusting. So uh, so this is Glenn. This is far from the first time Israel has killed American citizens in Gaza and the West Bank in the last year. Even the IDF account published in Haaretz shows how deliberately they killed all seven aid workers in the three clearly marked cars. And this is uh, this is the woman from the video five months ago. Now, this is what I was saying. This is a this is an organization This is not some radical organization that's right. on the outs yeah. with uh, with institutional power. They're very cozy with institutional power, and that didn't protect them. Five months ago, target. yeah. Five months ago, WCK founder and State Department asset and Gray Zone. There's Max Blumenthal. Gray Zone has done an article about that, predating this. Jose Andres was feeding Israeli troops and blasting a Spanish minister for calling for a ceasefire. His WCK coordinates coordinates with the Israeli military, and that that's why all these charities are pulling out. And and That's really, That's we can't prove this, but Keaton said this. That might be why they hit them specifically. Yes, of course, specifically because how do you not of, see that? I, what better way to scare the shit out of the rest of them? Right? Look Keaton? what they got exactly what. Oh, so obviously. we're going to starve these people to death. Keaton, obviously, if if there was one if there was one group to target that would scare everyone else away, it, it's this group. Dude, that is calculated. That is some calculated ass shit. So this is no, they're uh, evil. They are psychotically evil. And we have the story. It about really them is. Making... I mean, Nor- Norm calls them satanic. They really are satanic. I mean, it, it is a level. It is, it, it is a it level really of is. evil that is really not human. You know, like I, I can't go like Hillary Clinton as level. far as I want to go on a censorious <laughs> platform. But you know, I do not acknowledge the humanity of a, of people who deliberately starve children to death. Like you are not a human being in my book. If you do that on purpose, I do not acknowledge the humanity in you if that's what you're willing to do. And that is what they're willing to do. So it is it is an inhuman evil that these people are capable of. Uh, So this is uh, Glenn and Professor Mearsheim are discussing this. It seems to me like this kind of a rationale, like we decided to wipe out an entire convoy of aid workers because we thought that among them was one armed Hamas member. Is the kind of rationale that's so flagrantly unacceptable, even in a war zone, that it's kind of shocking to hear the Israeli government using that as its story, as its excuse, especially given that citizens of the West, not just Palestinians, were killed. What do you make of that event and that justification? Well, the Israelis basically treat Gaza as a free fire zone, which is that anything that moves inside of Gaza is a target that they are free to attack. And they basically believe that they can get away with it. Yes, there will be a lot of criticism from the usual circles, but in the end, the Americans will protect them because the Americans always protect them. And before, when you were talking about the American response to this event, this event, I think everything you said, Glenn, supports the basic point I'm making, that the Americans will not punish them. And if anything, the Americans um, will protect them. And 
This is hardly surprising for anybody who knows anything about Israeli history. Just go back to 1967 when the Israelis attacked the Liberty, an American ship that was in the Eastern Mediterranean. It's quite clear that the Israelis knew that they were killing Americans, uh, and they nevertheless did it. And there was no punishment for them. And Lyndon Johnson, who was president at the time, uh, protected the Israelis at every turn. And there has never been any official uh, investigation of what happened that settled this issue of the liberty in any meaningful way. And this particular issue that now just took place uh, in Gaza with the humanitarian aid convoy bears marked resemblance to what happened to the liberty. And there are other examples as well, including the case a few years ago when Rachel Corey, who was an American aid worker, was run over by a bulldozer in Israel. Uh, she was blatantly killed at the time, and the American government did virtually nothing. And there, I remember all there this. you have it. We're, we're Israel's bitch. And th this is why, as a Jewish person, um, when the Israelis say they're fighting to protect us from anti Semitism, I, 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 it makes me sick because People trash Jews this kind of is it. what's yeah. causing anti Semitism. Most people, most you got some sick bastards, you always will. Most people would give a shit about Jews and what they do if it was not for Israel. Israel is the greatest cause of anti-Semitism on earth because of this. Because how do people like me, like Keaton, like Norman Finkelstein, how do we argue against people who do believe wrongly that there's some kind of you know, secret cabal that meets in the subways or something. It's not a secret. When, when you see something <laughs> like this. Yeah. When you see, I mean, there is, but it's a state and yeah. it's lobbyists, APAC, but it's right. not, you know, the Zog. There's but not, they'll you link know, you some, to it. That's the they, most fucked know, up I part mean, of it. I mean, if there, if there is, I'm getting gypped. They haven't sent my membership card. No, you're but, a self-hating Jew. You're worse yeah. than the Amalek. <laughs> exactly. I, whenever I hear that, I'm, I crack up. A self-hating Jew like every Jew I've ever met in America. That's why we have ethnic rhinoplasty because of the cell. What are you talking about? Maybe uh, Israelis should try some of that self-hatred. Stop murdering people. That, that, that would be an idea. But when I see things like this, I say, yeah, man, um, you're really making me safe. Uh, I don't think so. Keaton, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, Keaton, Keaton anything? Uh, no, I'm looking up e ethnic rhinoplasty. What is that? I've never heard of that. <laughs> you haven't? The no, I've never one. heard of that. I'm looking it up right now. You no, know, it's real. Ethnic That's a term. Rhinoplasty. Is, is it it's based yeah, on the hatred of, of a Middle Eastern nose? Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. Most popular kind of surgery. It's not just oh, Jews. Oh, yeah? It's Persians, Armenians. Yeah, why, you know, why are you reading The art of ethnic case somebody rhinoplasty, needs it. a nose job that preserves your cultural identity. In case somebody well, wants it. Yeah, it doesn't. More about that. Spoiler alert: It doesn't preserve it. <laughs> Hollywood's based on hatred of your own features. You know, that's what this place is based on. Hey, there's still tickets available in Stockholm, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Edmonton, Alberta, Vancouver, British Columbia, Denver, Ashland, Virginia, and Athens, Georgia. See you there. Mm -hmm.